Good afternoon, guys. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon uh, for this webinar, which is Website Basics. Uh, can I just get a thumbs up from somebody that you guys can hear me in the audience? I just like to make sure my audio is working correctly before I get into things. Excellent. I'm getting a thumbs up. This is great news. So everything is going according to plan. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys being on time today. We have just over 20 registered guests. We normally find anywhere from sort of 10 to 15 of those will be here today. Uh, and I am just going to get straight into it so that we don't waste any time because I'm sure like most of the time when I do this webinar, you'll have a lot of questions. So thank you again for joining me. This uh, webinar is brought to you through the Australian Federal Government's Australian Small Business Advisory Services Program. Uh, it is brought to you in, by, in Queensland, Northern Territory and Western Australia by Business Station, Regional Development Australia and Treaty Consulting. We're very proud to be part of this program and we know that a lot of business owners learn lots from this. So we love it. For those of you that haven't met me before, my name is Kerry Savran. I'm the co-founder of Altitude Business Solutions. A little bit about me there. Um, obviously, I'm a current advisor with the Australian Small Business Advisory Services also, and the president of the Beanley Yatley Chamber of Commerce, a role that I really love and enjoy. So in today's discussions, we are going to be covering a few things. We're going to be talking about why you need a website, which I'm sure you already know, but I just want to clarify that with you. What options are available to you? Um, basic website terminology, and then I'm going to go through some basic website elements. So uh, as like all of my, my webinars, I'm open to discussion at the end and we will have uh, any questions that you have throughout the session, please put them into the chat and I'll do my best to answer them as we go through. So why do you need a website? This may seem like a very basic question, but I just want to start out from, from the actual bottom. So what's interesting to note is that in, in the research that's been done, 81% of people will actually research a business online or a, a business a service or a product online before they actually make a purchasing decision. Now, what's interesting about that is out of that 56% of those people will not trust a business that doesn't have a website. So if they're considering doing business with you and they do a Google search of your business and they can't find a website, then half of them are not going to do business with you straight away. So having a website, while well, a lot of people think you don't need a website today, blah, 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 you do, you do. 56, the research is proving it, 56%. And this is consistent year on year. This stat is actually an Australian stat as well. So we're not talking about the whole entire rest of the world who is a lot more advanced normally overseas when it comes to internet. But here in Australia, you're talking about 56% of people who won't do business with you if they can't find a website. So having a website is extremely important. It cements you as a reputable business and it gives... The, um, the potential customer, the opportunity to know, get to know, like, and trust you. And we know that people need to know, like, and trust you before they will actually do business with you. So that's a really good reason why you need to have a, a website in place. The great thing about a website is that it's available 24-7, 365 days of the year, even when you are not. So if you have great content on your website or if your website is very user friendly or it talks directly to your clients and your customers, it can be, it can be getting business for you even when you are asleep. Now, a lot of people look at their website and they say, uh, I don't have very many people filling out the forms on my website or I don't have very many people buying anything from my website. So in terms of what I feel is a success, that's an unsuccessful website. And that's not true. What people are looking for is they're looking for a point of reference for your business. They're looking for an opportunity to get to know behind the scenes a little bit about what it is that you do, the services that you offer. But people are also really reluctant just to fill their name and details out on a website form as well. So sometimes you'll find, and I know I'm guilty of this, I would prefer to pick up the phone and call the business. Okay, I can see by their website that they're actually open on Monday at 10 o'clock. I'm going to give them a call at about 10.30 on Monday and have a chat to somebody about it. I feel better about doing that. I will never fill out a form on a website unless I've already spoken to the person first. I had that exact example today. I wanted to do business with someone, looked up their website, all looked great. 
it's said into your details here and we'll be in touch. No thanks, I'll give you a call. <laughs> they had their mobile number on there. I rang the person, spoke to them. Then I went back to the site after I'd spoken to them and filled out the details, um, the form on the website saying I was interested in doing business with them. So the website told me that they were a reputable business. It gave me their number and it also told me when they were available to speak to. So uh, it's really important that you have those details on there and we'll go through that a little bit later. But this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying your website can be available 24-7, 365 days a year, even when you're not. I want you to think about the concept of some people work uh, nights, for example, and they might not get home till two o'clock in the morning and maybe they're going to do a bit of scrolling on social media or look a few things up. They'll be able to look up your details on your website. So a really good reason why. Now, it's, as I was saying, you know, basically just said these things anyway, but a website will build credibility for you. It will cement you as an expert in your field. It showcases your business. Um, you know, they can purchase direct if they're that type of person and they're happy to purchase direct if you've got an e-commerce site or you're selling a product. If you've got a great website that's actually built up a bit of rapport for the person, they'll purchase straight away. Um, it gives your customers and clients an opportunity to check you out to see whether you're someone that they'd like to do business with. And it gives you a 24 seven shop front. You know, no business can, even a bricks and mortar business cannot be open 24 seven. If you are a bricks and mortar business, um, one of the suggestions I have is that you always have pictures of your actual shop on your website also, so that people know what the inside of your shop looks like so that they have an opportunity to come to you if they, if they wish and uh, they have an expectation of what they're gonna see when they get there. So what options are available to you when it comes to website build? Now, I'm going to assume that there's some people on here today who don't have a website and that you're here to learn a little bit about the basics so that you can move forward with getting some. But I also understand that there are going to be people who already have a website and you're going to be more interested in the types of content that you need to have on your website for success. And we will get to that also. But I'm just going to go through some options for you. So you need to consider when it comes to your website, where is your time best spent? And we see it time and time again. Uh, a customer that we dealt with yesterday was a really good example. So they have spent all this time and effort building a website. Now we find that most businesses, they either have one of two things, they either have time or they have money. So they either are uh, sort of budget conscious, but they have a lot of time and they're happy to build the website themselves and learn all about it. Then there are people who are so flat out, they know they need a website, but they're just so absolutely busy that they don't have the time to build it themselves, but they've got the money that they can pay somebody to do it. So it's just about establishing where you are. So the first option there that we have is that you can build and manage your own website. Now that's what I like to call the do it yourself version. It's where you jump on to something like a GoDaddy or a Wix or a Weebly um, or if you're game enough to even consider a WordPress website and I'll touch a bit on WordPress in a little bit, um, but you are going to build it yourself and you're going to manage it yourself. You've got the time to come to webinars like this and as far as you're concerned, you're very happy to visit things like this, learn all about it and build one yourself. The second option for you is that you have somebody build it for you and then you actually manage it. So they might teach you how to use it a little bit. You know, if you want to change a picture here or if you want to change some text, you do this or this or this. So you have control of the back end and you actually are able to update it after they've built it for you. You're able to update it yourself. So that's what I like to call the done with you version of a website. That's where somebody else has built it and now they're going to quickly show you how you can update it and use it. So that's done with you. Then the last option there, which is have somebody build and manage your website for you. So that is where somebody builds it and then they manage it for you. And every time you need a change, you're happy just to send off a quick email and say, hey, please find the picture attached. We need this page updated. Now, this is recommended. I would recommend this only for businesses who don't have a product offering or who uh, don't need an update to their website very often. So, because otherwise it can get rather expensive. I know that a lot of website developers, they don't have 
uh, an editing feature as part of their hosting. So every time you ring and say, I want to change, there may be a fee attached to that. So if you are, if you are time poor and you have the cash, this is a great option because somebody else just takes care of it for you and you know that the website runs effectively. So this is what I call the complete done for you version. So if we go from the top, the top one is a do it yourself build and manage your own website. The middle one is a done with you. So have someone build your website and you manage it. And the third one is just have somebody else take care of the whole lot for you so that you can concentrate on running your business. And as you can appreciate, the, the do it yourself version is gonna be the cheapest option. Having someone build it and new management is going to be a little bit more expensive and having someone build and manage it for you is going to be the most expensive option for you. So that's, you know, what you need to consider is before starting a website or before thinking about building a website is what option do I want to be? Do I want to do the do it yourself because I'm happy to manage it all and happy to do all of that? Um, or am I going to get somebody to build it for me? Now, keeping in mind with the do it yourself version, there is a lot that goes into a successful website. It's not just about what you see on the page. It's about what happens in the back end also. And we will be going into that. I'm very conscious of time. I know that I've only got another 40 minutes with you. And a lot of people know when you come to my webinars, I go over because I try to give as much detail as I possibly can. So the three options, build, your, build and manage your own website, as I said, have someone build it for you. Uh, and you manage it. So that is the done with you version. And then finally have someone build and manage your website. So completely done for you. You don't want anything to do with it. It just runs smoothly. There's never any dramas. So that's what you do when you've got the cash, I guess, to be able to do it. So basic terminology of websites is what I'm going to run through now, just so when I'm talking, not only when I'm talking about things, but when you hear other experts talking about things, you know exactly what they're talking about. So the first things that these are the, the six things that I'm going to cover today. So search engine optimization. Um, I'm going to cover a favor con very quickly, uh, responsive layout, uh, the back end, hosting, and domain. We're going to cover those three, um, those six, sorry, uh, terminologies for you today. And I know a couple of people have just jumped into the room now. So I will mention, guys, that you are uh, muted with your videos off for today's session. But if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them into the chat. Uh, and you will get a copy of this recording today also. So search engine optimization. Now, this is the art and science of getting pages to rank in Google. It's, it's one of these kind of mysterious things, you know, Google searches in mysterious ways. Um, you know, Google search is one of the main ways in which people discover content online or they discover your business. And so you really want your website to be ranking as high as it possibly can in search engines for what your, uh, your niche is or what you offer your clients. And and I'll use website design as an example. If website design is where your business is at, then you want somebody to be able to search website design and your business comes up. So it's about having a lot of content on there so that you can show up in search engines. Now, there are other search engines other than Google. Of course, we talk about Google a lot because it's probably one of the biggest but we're also talking about sites like Bing and, and other search engines as well. Um, Facebook is um, actually turning into a bit of a search engine. We're finding that because uh, sort of 85% of people are actually on Facebook on a daily basis, that they're starting to use um, Facebook is a bit of a search engine as well. But unfortunately, your website will not appear on Facebook if you don't have a Facebook page. So that's another whole conversation. But uh, search engine optimization is about you coming up in those searches. Now, Favicon, oh, I just noticed I haven't changed my picture there. That makes it a bit confusing. But we are talking about a Favicon. Now, what is a Favicon? Now, Favicon is the little image that appears next to your domain name in the browser address bar. So if you look at the image that I have just underneath the wording here, you'll notice that there's a little E and it says website basics. That little E is called a Favicon. We move over to the next one. This is the website for the Beanley at the Chamber of Commerce. And you'll notice that there is a little picture that comes up with the Beanley at the Chamber of Commerce. Same again, when we go over to Altitude Business Solutions on that tab, you'll notice that there is a little mountain in there. Now this little picture is called a Favicon. If you don't have a Favicon for your website, what will happen is two things. Firstly, if you are using a WordPress website, they will advertise themselves. So they will put a W up in there and it'll be a WordPress website. 
Uh, a lot of other uh, website uh, developers, they don't put anything. Some, some do, some will advertise themselves. Others will put just like a little earth symbol in there. So you won't, I should have actually had an example of what it looked like without it, but this gives you brand recognition. So if you're like me and, you know, I've only got, this is only a three tab example, but show me a time where I only had three tabs open on my Google Chrome because it never happens. I constantly have at least probably 10 to 15 open for the whole entire day. So what happens is these address bars get smaller and smaller to the stage where I can't even see the wording out to business solutions. All I can see is a little favor con. So as I'm flicking through sites and remembering that the longer I spend on your site on an active page, the better it is for your website. So if I want to go back to Altitude Business Solutions, well, the little favor con will always be a point of recognition for me. And it's probably one of the most common things we find with website builds that is missing is the little favor con. Um, and it really does help. Google likes uh, websites that have completed everything in the back end and the favor con is one of those things in the back end also. So a responsive layer. Now we know that you can have a desktop version of your website and we can also have a mobile version of your website. Now what happens traditionally is that you build your website on your desktop. But that doesn't mean that it's been optimized or has a responsive layout for your mobile phone. Now when it comes to the different platforms, if you're looking at the build it yourself option, so we're talking about uh, Wix and GoDaddy and Weebly and all of those ones, Wix is a really good example. So with Wix, you build your desktop website on your desktop, and then you actually need to toggle it over to show me the mobile phone website, show me the mobile website. And you will find that you need to change it. The words will be too big. It'll be all over the place. And so you have to shrink things down. So essentially, from my perspective, I'm like, you need to build the website twice. When I have to fix a website of a client that they've built on Wix, and then I have to toggle between the, well, this is what it looks like when it's on a desktop. And now I need to go and change it on a, a mobile. I get so frustrated because I feel like in today's day and age, it should transfer over automatically. Uh, but it doesn't. Uh, if you're using a platform like Weebly, Weebly has a great reputation for being able to transfer uh, desktop websites over to the mobile version. Uh, you just need to make sure that it is optimized properly and it's done correctly, but essentially you only have to build one website. You don't have to build the desktop website and then go and build the mobile website because that's essentially nearly what you have to do on Wix uh, and it can be quite frustrating. So uh, that's just something for you to keep in mind, but it needs to be a responsive layout. So when you're on your desktop version, I, you know, words, everyone has lots of words, there's lots of words reading there, but when you're on your mobile phone, you think about yourself and, you know, and it's proven 80% plus of people are looking at your website on their mobile phone now. Uh, so you don't want to see all those words. So you would need to cut the amount of wording down. It's really picture based when it's on your mobile phone. There's also things like if you see a picture on a mobile phone, you think you can click it with your finger. So you expect to have, and that's what we're talking about, responsive layout. Um, if you have your mobile phone advertised on your website, we're expecting that to be a clickable link so that if I want to call you, I should be able to click on that number and my phone starts ringing. That's what we're talking about when we're saying a responsive layout, making sure that those uh, people who are on your website on a mobile phone can actually use the responsiveness on a, of it by being able to call or email you directly from those words or phrases. Then we've got the back end. So, uh, you know, there's a, always a back end to everything, isn't there? There's a back end of a website. Now, if, if you're really into code and all of that kind of stuff, you'll know about the back end. But there's very simple things in the back end of a website that if you're building it yourself need to really be updated. So we're talking about page names, we're talking about page descriptions, none of that will appear on the actual website or on the page, but it needs to be filled out in the back end in order to help with your search engine optimization. So you need to make sure there's nothing worse than going to a page and it doesn't have a name and it doesn't have any details. Google has no idea what it is. You need to tell those search engines what's on that page so that when someone's searching, it can say, hey, this looks like it's going to be a page for you. So uh, knowing the back end and knowing what you need to fill out. 
Now, then there's a thing called hosting, and I want you to keep this in mind as well. So if you get someone to build your website, and I'm just going to throw a figure out there and say, let's say they're charging you $1,500 to build your website. Normally what happens is you build a website and part of that package is you get 12 months worth of hosting or you get two years worth of hosting along with that. So you don't have to think about it for a couple of years. But at some stage or another, there is going to be a charge for your hosting. Hosting is, is an ongoing fee. So you would normally have a yearly cost for hosting and it can be anywhere from $300 up to $500, just depending on who you're with and what you're doing, what level of hosting you've got. Um, obviously, if you've got email addresses linked to that and all of that kind of thing, that can change it dramatically. But um, there is ongoing hosting costs. So don't think when you go to, to GoDaddy and you build your website yourself, that's it, you're done and dusted. You will have a yearly hosting cost that you will need to pay. And essentially, when you sign up to those things, you are paying the hosting cost and you're building it yourself. They're not charging you to build it. They're just charging you to host it, essentially. Then you've got the domain and I like to explain this one. So, do, so domain names uh, are used to identify uh, one or more address. So the, the domain name would be the, you know, www.altitudebusinesssolutions.com.au or .info. You know, whatever it is, that's named as the domain name. Domain name. So if you want to search to see whether your domain name is available before you start, you can go to somewhere like a crazy domains. That's an Australian based one. Um, they're ones that we use because we find that we get the most responsiveness from them. Um, and they'll give you all the options and they'll tell you if the, the um, website is available also. Our business name, Altitude Business Solutions, is really long. We really wanted ABS, but abs.com.au was already taken. So we weren't able to use that. So we've had to stick with Altitude Business Solutions and we're just you know, we, we thought for an email address, um, you know, at altitudebusinesssolutions.com.au is a bit long. So we're looking at um, getting a branded uh, email address that's a little bit different. So that's a domain. So key elements to your website, you'll notice, you know, what are we, 20 minutes into this webinar, I've really ripped through the first bit because I feel like this is where you guys have really come today. So um, whether you're building a website from scratch or whether you have a website, you wanna know what those key elements are and key things to consider for your website so that you can make sure you're getting the best for your clients. So the first thing is an easy to navigate homepage. So as I said to you earlier, when it comes to the mobile sites, it's not about the words, it's about making it easy for the client to find what they need. So. I always say you want people to be able to get to where they need to be on your website in as less, least clicks as possible. So thing to consider when you're on a mobile phone and you would have been on your website on a mobile phone previously, it doesn't have tabs. So what normally happens is if you have five different pages, okay, you, you'll be sent to the home page. And then up in the top right or left hand corner, there's normally a series of bars that you can click on those and it will show you the other pages. Statistics have shown that the chances of somebody actually going to those little bars and clicking on it are pretty slim. Um, they're looking at that home page. They're wanting answers from the home page where you are. So you need to consider putting your services or your product offerings in some way, shape or form on your home page to make it easier for them to get to when they are on a mobile phone. So you might introduce yourself as an example, and then you might say, what are you looking for today? And you might have visit our shop, um, read our blog or contact us. And that will get them to those, when they click on those, it will get them to those three pages because that's sort of putting it right in front of them. I will go, I will take you guys to our website a little bit later. Look, our website's not perfect, of course. In fact, there's probably some of these things that you guys will find are not done. Uh, but it's always evolving for us. So we're constantly changing it. You, you go on it this week and then you go on it next week. It'll be two totally, totally, completely different sites. But I will just take you in and show you what I'm talking about. So an easy to navigate homepage is really important. If they can't find what they're after, then, and it's not responsive enough, they're just going to move on. Now, when it comes to being responsive, and I'm not sure if that's actually one of my key elements, but I'm going to mention it now. If you have high quality photos on your website, they do take time to load. And there's nothing more frustrating for somebody who's trying to decide if they're doing business with you than going onto your website and finding that 
your pictures don't load or it takes too long. If your website is taking eight seconds to load, that's too long. A little tip for you is when you're uploading anything to your website, just make sure it's in JPEG format, not in PNG. As I said, the majority of people will open up your website on their mobile phone, so it's only small anyway. I don't normally find I have an issue with pixelating of images or anything like that. It's just that a JPEG image is slightly less quality and it won't take as long to load on the website. So it'll take the frustration out of it for the people who visit your site. So an easy to navigate homepage is one brand consistent copy. Now this is about the words. So the previous one that we were just on an easy to navigate homepage, nothing to do with the words brand consistent copy. This is all about the words, what you say, how you say it all forms part of your brand. And the key to it is consistency. I'm going to give you a really good example here. Uh, we met with a client maybe three weeks ago. She was a bookkeeper. So uh, she contacted us and said, look, I'm having trouble um, keeping clients. I mean, you know, I've got clients coming in on my website. That's all great, but I'm having trouble keeping them and we're wanting a little bit of advice. So we set up an appointment with her. We went and reviewed her digital platform and it was amazing. Her website was amazing. Um, everything was amazing. Everything was fantastic. Then we had the opportunity to actually catch up with her and meet her. And when we met her, it was the feeling that we got when we actually met and spoke with her was completely different to the brand perception we had of her being online. Now online, she was dressed extremely professionally. They were professional photos. She was makeup to the heel. She looked absolutely, you know, she looks absolutely beautiful. But that was not a reflection of what we were getting when we were meeting her in person. And I'm not saying that what we saw in person was a bad thing, but what we saw was not what we saw online. So it, it initially gave us that feeling of doubt hang on a second, on the website, she's wearing a suit and she has this, this and this, and now she's turned up and she doesn't look anything like that. So brand consistent, consistency and authenticity are really important. So if you don't dress like a glamour model every day in your, in your power suit, do your power stance and get out there, then don't have your website looking like that. Make sure that your website is about who you are and how you present yourself and how your business presents itself on a daily basis. Because when someone's trying to get to know, like, and trust you, they're looking for consistency because they, otherwise it puts doubts in their, in their mind. Oh, she, you know, that's how great it was on the website that I met her and it was nothing in person. The feeling that we got was online. It was very professional or website and um, social media, everything was very professional and to the point, and this is what we do. And being a bookkeeper, they're very facts and figures. And then we met her and she was extremely warm and she really wanted to know about our business and whether she could help us. And it was a complete contrast to what we've seen. And so we helped her to devise a bit of a brand consistency in her copy and also in her images that she it's could change her website and actually go across and do it all. And from there, she was able to have that complete consistency from beginning to end. So she now understands that that was probably the reason why she wasn't getting customers. People were going to a website, they're filling a format. Yes, we want to do business with you. But because there wasn't that brand consistency all the way through, she wasn't actually winning the business. So she thought she had a sales problem, but we actually said, we think you've got a brand consistency problem. So we helped her with that as well. So just making sure that your brand is consistent and that your words are consistent with your brand also. Now, if you're going to, if you're going to build a website yourself and you're looking for somewhere to invest a little bit of money into, please invest it into the copy. Um, I know some fantastic copywriters. Uh, they charge minimal amounts to write blogs or to write the copy on your website and it'll be there forever. So it's definitely money worth invested in. Now, the next thing is a search bar. Now, not all websites have a search bar. This is just something for you, to, an element for you to consider. We don't have a search bar on our website because we have a hidden course um, that you can't see. And if I, if I was to put um, a search bar on there and somebody was to search for it, the hidden course might come up and they would have access to it for free. 
So uh, I didn't want that. So we don't have a search bar. But if you want to make it, if you don't have anything hidden or a course or something that you're trying to sell, you want people to find what they're looking for as quickly as possible on their site. So having a search bar just means, oh, I know that these people do bookkeeping services. So I'm just going to search services. And it will bring up the exact page they need to go to, just like a search engine. So um, having a search bar might be something that you need to consider for your website also. Now, the next one is really important and it's frequently asked questions. So people really underestimate the importance of frequently asked questions on their website. So what you need to remember is that your customers and clients are not experts in your field. You are. You're the expert. So you need to make sure that you are answering all their fears and uncertainties and doubts. Now, the great thing about frequently asked questions is that you normally know they're normally your client's problems. So if you're a bookkeeper and you have a monthly fee for your services, one of the frequently asked questions might be, uh, is am I locked into a 12 month contract? So that might be one of the frequently asked questions and you can answer that question. So having a page that has frequently asked questions on it just gives your potential client or customer the opportunity to head there and possibly have their fears, uncertainties and doubts cured so that they can do business with you sooner. If you don't have a frequently asked questions page and I have questions, I've now got to make the decision about whether I'm emailing you, contacting you via your site or giving you a call. Where if you had a frequently asked questions page, I might flick to that page and find the answer to my question right there on the page. So I don't have to, you know, I have that answer. So now I'm like building confidence that I'm going to do business with you. Now this frequently asked questions is also uh, something that helps with your SEO. So if you think about um, your business as an example, what are the problems that people are having? You know, what are the problems that your business solves for your clients? And that's a whole entire reason that you're in business. So what questions would they be asking about that? You know, how do I get started? You know, if I'm happy to go ahead, how do I get started? That's a really good frequently asked question to actually answer. So having the frequently asked questions um, available is good. We don't have a frequently asked questions page on our website at the moment because we're currently rehashing it with actual questions that our clients asked us and the questions that we had were ones that from the very beginning uh, and we've evolved a little bit. So we've got some more to add to that. But if you're struggling, uh, a really good place to start uh, a website that can help you out. So grab a pen and paper and write this one down. It's called Answer the Public. I might just pop that into the chat for you. It's answerthepublic.com.au. Oh, I haven't done that very well, but you guys get the gist. It's in there. Answer the public. So it is a website where you can actually search for terminology and find out across Google uh, what everybody is searching for in relation to that term. So I'm going to stick with the website example here. So let's say you're a web developer. Um, you would go to answer the public. Um, actually, it's not .com.au, sorry. It's just .com. Answer the public.com and you would type in website and it would give you all of the questions that people are asking about websites. Like, how do you build a website? Um, you know, how can you host a website? Should you build on a WordPress platform? All of those types of questions. So they're the most popular ones that you will find. Um, you're allowed three searches per day on answerthepublic.com free of charge. Uh, and it's fantastic uh, for being able to search for the frequently asked questions of your customers if you're not quite sure also. And all of that helps with your SEO. So you can appreciate if I'm looking for, you know, how do I design my own website? Um, if you've got the answer to that, um, Google is going to bring that up. If that's part of your frequently asked questions, Google is going to attempt to bring that up. Now, essentially, you might be on page 10 because of the ranking of your website, but that it will still bring it up regardless of where you are. So frequently asked questions. Think about all of the questions that your you know, brand new client doesn't know anything about what you do. What do they ask? They're the things that need to be on your frequently asked questioned list. 
your contact information in the footer. Now, the reason why I mentioned this is because back in the day when websites were built originally, all of the information was always in the footer. So everybody just knew you scrolled to the bottom and that's where you found the phone number, the email address, the address of the property, everything else. Websites have evolved a little bit now. Um, I always say when you go to a website, you know, have your, your contact details if you can um, at the top so that people can see them there. That's a really good place for it to, to be. Um, but please make sure you put it in the bottom. Please make sure you put it in the footer. It's called the footer. The reason why they call it the footer is because that footer at the bottom of that page will appear on every single page, no matter where they are on your website. So if you put the contact information in there, it doesn't matter if they're on your home page or if they're on your product page, your information will always be at the bottom. This is where I also put any social links that you have in there as well. Um, and just need to make sure that any mobile phone numbers or uh, email addresses or social links, that they're all clickable links. I hope you will understand what I mean by clickable links, but it means if your phone number is there, I should be able to click on your phone number and it will ring straight away. Keeping in mind that over 80% of people are on your website probably on a mobile phone. And uh, so they're used to just clicking on things. And if you don't have that as a clickable link, I actually have to copy that phone number. I have to get off your website. I have to go into my phone. I have to paste it in so I can give you a call. And if I'm honest with you, that's too much hard work for me. I'm lazy. Yes, I am. But if it's just direct link straight away to your mobile phone, and you can set them up this way also. Um, but if it's a direct link to your uh, mobile phone and it's going to call it straight away, then I'm happy. Um, same with your email address. If I can click your email address and my email uh, opens up and it has your email address in there and it starts emailing you, then I'm really happy. So they're the main things that um, you really need to have on your website. Now, I, I don't have any slides for it and I've actually, I'm up to my questions. Um, slide is sort of where I'm up to now. Um, but I do want to answer any questions that you have. And I know you might be sitting there quietly thinking, oh, I hope she was going to go through this and I hope she was going to go through that. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds or so to actually uh, bring any questions up. I might actually turn my video on so that you can see me. Um, so just put any questions that you have in the chat for me. That would be great because I'm happy to answer those uh, for you. And, um, you know, that way you can walk away today knowing everything that you needed to know. Um, and while those questions are coming in, I want to have a chat to you about any pictures that might be on your website. So when you have pictures on your website, I spoke to you earlier about making sure that they were in JPEG format so they're not so big, so they don't take up so much room. I want you to be really conscious of the file name of those um, pictures that you're putting up. So let's say you get a professional photographer in and they take uh, pictures of your product or pictures of you or what, you know, whatever you're going to have on your website. Traditionally, a photographer will call the photo something like, picture one, two, four, five, six. So that is not a descriptive picture at all. Um, it, it doesn't give any, give the Google or the user any idea as to what that picture is. It's just simply easy for the photographer to have it have some sort of number so they know where they've put it. But when you upload that to your website, it's not helping you out in the SEO factor at all. So before you upload any picture to your website, I want you to change the file name, okay? So change the file name of that picture. And I want it to, I want, I want it to be descriptive, but I also want it to advertise a little bit. So why this becomes important, there's two reasons. Firstly, if you put your business name in as part of the description, um, when you do a Google search of your business name and you go to images, these images will show up. So that's very important. You wanna make sure that that is happening. Um, but also it just makes it easier for Google to read exactly what that picture is also. So we're talking about the file name of the actual image that you upload. So if you're a bricks and mortar business, and I'm, I'm really sorry, I haven't even got an idea of who's in the room today. Maybe that's something you can put in the chat for me. Just give me an idea of what type of businesses we've got here today, whether we've got bricks and mortar businesses or whether we've just got online businesses or, you know, I know a lot of things have changed in 2020. But if you guys can be a little bit interactive with me and put it into the chat, that'd be great. It'll give me an idea of what I'm dealing with here. Uh, 
but if you uh, change that file name when you upload it to your website, that's going to help you out as best with your SEO. So it means that when someone searches your business name, if the picture is your business name, um, and then let's say it's a picture of a flower, then you would put your business name and then you would say picture of a flanger, oh, you know, frangipani um, as the description of the picture and then upload it. So that way you're getting some SEO advantage out of it as well. The other thing that you need to consider with your pictures is something called alt text. Have we all, have we heard of alt text before? Now it refers to alternative text. Yes, we have. Thanks, Julie. <laughs> it was great to have a bit of interaction. I feel like I'm here by myself sometimes. So I really appreciate that. So alt text is where you can actually put in an alternate text to your picture. So I want you to think about where would this be used? Well, it would be used by maybe somebody who was seeing impaired, someone who was blind. Um, so they need to know, you know, they hear websites, they don't see websites, that they hear them. The other place that it's used is in, you know, if you're using an Alexa or if you're using a Suri or if you're using something along those lines and Suri speaks back to you, that's where it's also used. So alt text can be really important. But when it comes to the alt text of your pictures, I want you to be a little bit strategic and let's stick with the flower of the frangipani because I'm there now. So let's say it was a picture of a frangipani and uh, your business name was Bob's Bikes. Um, the old text on that picture that I would be recommending, it, Bob's Bikes has a location um, and I'm going to say it's in Brisbane, Queensland because I'm halfway between Brisbane and the Gold Coast, so I stick with the familiar things. And um, so uh, I'm going to say Bob's uh, Bike Shop is in Brisbane. So I would put Bob's Bike Shop um, and pink frangipani or Bob's Bike Shop uh, is, is showing a pink frangipani. So that's how it's going to read. You sort of need to write your text like as if it would be said. So that's going to get your business name in there. Um, there's also an opportunity for you to get Brisbane in there. So it could be Bob's Bike Shop in Brisbane is talking about a frangipani or has a frangipani picture. So, or has a frangipani, just something along those lines. So you're trying to get your business name in there and you're trying to get your location in there. So that's really good for your old text also. So you can see that we've had a message come through. You're using Wix.com to build a new website. Uh, you'd also like to have an online store. Is it possible to have a website with Wix and online store with an open cut? I believe you can have an open. There is an e-commerce uh, version of Wix. So you should be able to have an open store cart. Um, I would love to talk to you about this uh, probably just on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, maybe you could send me an email. Uh, I will actually put my email into the chat for you all now. Uh, it might be best if you send me an email and that way I've got a little bit more context about what your business is and how, you know, I might be able to guide you best on that. So bear with me. So altitudebusinesssolutions.au at gmail.com is my current email address. You can see why I'm looking to change it. So it's a little bit long and cumbersome at the moment and we are looking to go to a branded one. So uh, yeah, please send through, send me through an email because um, I'd just love to get a little bit more context about what you're looking for. Uh, when it comes to normally, if somebody had come to me and said, I'm wanting to have an e-commerce e e site and um, I'm looking at selling products online, I send them straight to Shopify. Uh, it is a little bit more expensive, but it has the best reputation, great for SEO, all of those types of things. So there's no other questions that have really come through. So I want to have a little chat to you about WordPress. So probably, and the reason why I'm talking about this is because through the ASBAS program, these are the problems that we are dealing with when we're having our one-on-one -on -one session. So we deal with a lot of business owners who have decided to build their own word, uh, their own website. And they went WordPress because somewhere along the line, someone told them that WordPress is the best possible hosting, the best website you can possibly have, and they wanted the best. So that's why they went for it. Can I tell you, our website is not a WordPress website. It's a Weebly website. We get great SEO from it. We have over 200 people visiting our website. We get the majority of our business from there. And it is not a WordPress website. Now, the reason why we didn't go down the WordPress track is because I, uh, I mean, I have an idea about code. And I looked at the interface and it just was not user-friendly at all. 
And it also meant that I could quite easily uh, make mistakes on it. And I didn't want that for myself and I didn't want that for my clients either. So we chose another path. But I always say to people when somebody says to me, oh, WordPress is the best possible website you can have, why? So I ask the question, why? And it is amazing how many web developers cannot answer that question when you just go, but why? And they go, oh, well, you know, it has the best platform. You know, well, you know, Wix and Weebly and GoDaddy, they have great platforms as well, are very easy to build off. So what's the standout difference between WordPress and, and those? And it's interesting how they really can't answer that question. So what I want you to understand is that some WordPress builders can be very complicated and it can be very difficult. If you have a WordPress site now and you're managing it, then congratulations to you. You've done a fantastic job. The majority of people that we deal with through the ASVAS program come to us because they're having problems with this WordPress website. They have no idea where to start and it's too complicated. So we then find that we can show them some alternatives uh, that might be a little bit easier and they decide to transfer their website um, because they really don't need all the code and all that type of thing. The other thing I'll say to you is that if you've come here for guidance on, on how to build your own website or what to do today, you really do only need a one page website. You don't need to have a thousand pages. You might remember back in the day where you would have 27 pages of content um, and that was what was advised in the first lot of builds that everybody used to do was having that uh, as many pages as you can, as much content. But that was before mobile phones. You know, we were only visiting websites when we were on a computer and it was a nice big screen and you could see lots of things. Now with mobile phones, we expect everything to be responsive and quick and we get the information as quickly as possible. Technology is fantastic, but it's really trained us to want things quickly. I mean, you guys have probably found that in business as well. Do you find that your clients are really impatient? You know, they send an email at eight o'clock in the morning and by 12 o'clock, if you haven't replied, they're emailing you again saying you haven't replied to my email. So it's interesting how the world has evolved. So you do, you can get away with just having a one or two page website. You don't have to have 27 pages anymore. And there's also lots of plugins and lots of things that you can use now to make things easier. So if you are um, somebody who takes, maybe you have uh, a booking system online that somebody books sessions with you, you're a doctor or, you know, they need to book into your diary. There are so many options for you to be able to integrate um, regardless of what platform that you are on. Um, we personally love Calendly um, is a great one for being able to book. We love the fact that it sends out automatic SMSs and all that kind of stuff. I think it's around $15 a month and it saves a lot of time for a lot of businesses. Our CRM system has its own scheduling platform. So we tend to use that. But there are so many options for you to plug in and embed codes as well. So did anybody else have any other questions on that today? I know I've got about 10 minutes. I've got a couple of little things to go through, a little bit of housekeeping, but if you've got any questions, now's the time. So think about maybe what you were hoping to get out of today. And if you have any questions that I have left out, um, please put them into the chat before we finish up today. So you might be wondering now, okay, well, that's great. I've got a bit of an idea of what my, my basic website needs and what I should be doing. So what's the next step for me? Well, when it comes to the ASBAS program, uh, oh, sorry, that the, uh, I can see a question just came through. The booking platform, it's called Calendly. I'll put that in the chat, K-A-L-E-N-D, uh, Calendly. Yeah, it's fantastic, fantastic platform. So you might be wondering where to from here with the ASVAS program or well, what you've attended today is a webinar and it's a free webinar. They're fantastic um, that you guys can attend these. You wouldn't normally have access to me as an expert in this field. Um, for free. So this is the only reason that you get it is because it's being done through the ASVAS program. So you'll see there on the screen, you have an option to book some one-on-one -on -one sessions if you're interested. They're from $66. You get a whole hour with me. If you're local, as I said, I'm between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. And, you, you know, if you're local and you wanted to book with me, we can arrange for me to go to you. Otherwise, the sessions are online, just like you're seeing today as well. Uh, then we have our workshops. Now the workshops, I think they're $24.19 at the moment, but I'll tell you that in a few minutes. 
they're sort of normally we only have about eight people in the room they're interactive everybody has their videos on everybody has their microphones on and we go through a two we have a two hour session on the subject um, what you've come there to and then we've got our free webinars which you've come to today make sure that you book in for as many free webinars as you possibly can because we don't know um, whether that will come to an end or not so get in early so what's coming up for us, because a lot of people ask, you know, well, this is great. What have you guys got coming up next as a webinar? So our next webinar is actually tonight. So uh, 6.30 Queensland time. So just depending on where you are, I'm going to put the link directly into the chat for this one now, just because it's a little bit soon and you might want to go and register straight away. But we are going to be talking about social media content planning this evening. So uh, if you are uh, wondering how you can plan your content for your social media, that's what we're going to be talking about in tonight's session. And then our next workshop is on MailChimp and it's called MailChimp 101. And via that same link, you'll be able to see the details as well. Uh, and it is, oh, I don't even have a date down there, but it is the Friday the 5th. It's this coming Friday, I believe. So um, that is when you will be able to see that as well. But if you head to asbaz.com.au, you'll be able to find all of the information on all of the uh, uh, webinars and workshops that are coming out. Now, what I want you to remember is, as I said to you guys, these are experts that you're getting across Queensland, Northern Territory and Western Australia. And I am yet to meet one of the experts that doesn't know what they're talking about for starters, but also I've attended some of these workshops myself because it's much easier for me to do it through the ASBAS program as well. So make sure you're utilising this program. It's apparently only around till June. I'd like to think that it would be extended, but you just never know. We'll have to wait and see. So get yourself into those free webinars and uh, make sure you look at all of the workshops also, because two hours is a long time. You get a lot of information, uh, very, very comprehensive. So don't miss out on those. And that's pretty much it for me today. I mean, normally I would have a little bit more interaction, but you guys have been a little bit quiet. So if there isn't any final questions, uh, I will wrap up the session today a few minutes early and say thank you very much for all being on time. I know that makes a huge difference. And uh, it's really nice to do a webinar where I haven't had any technical issues. We're about to have a storm here. So for those of you that are nearby, halfway in between Brisbane and the Gold Coast, you might hear the, the rumbling in the background. Um, so I was concerned my internet wasn't going to hold up, but it's done a great job uh, this afternoon. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for, um, for joining me. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. You will get a copy of this recording. But I really hope that you take advantage of this ASBAS program and that I have an opportunity to see you in another workshop or webinar or maybe even a one-on-one -on -one session. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon or evening wherever you are in Australia and I'll see you again soon.